Do you take your voice for granted? It is reported that the one in 13 adults is affected by a voice problem annually, but only a fraction of these people seek help, even though the impact of the voice problem is huge. Watch this video to learn how you can avoid being one of these people. And it's easier than you think. Hi, I am Katerina, speech-language pathologist, and here on this channel I share practical tips about using your voice in a healthy way. So if this is a topic that interests you, consider subscribing to this channel and hitting that bell notification icon so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Chances are that if you've never had a voice problem, you most likely never gave your voice any thought. You probably don't know about voice care beyond keep your voice hydrated or don't yell. And I get it. Why would you? Well, let's talk about that later. Chances are that if you've ever had a minor vocal issue like a hoarse voice due to a common cold or flu that resolved itself within a short period of time, you gave your voice a little bit of attention. You drank more fluids, rested your voice, or took some throat lozenges or syrup to soothe your throat. As soon as your voice problem was resolved, you very quickly forgot that you have a voice. And I get it. Why would you? Or should you? Chances are that if you ever had to deal with a long-standing voice problem or are dealing with a voice problem right now, you know the value of your voice. You realize that you use your voice every single day for so many different tasks, from using it at work, to talking to your friends and family after work, from taking phone calls, communicating with your colleagues, to reading books to your kids, ordering food, or even singing. And when the voice is not working as it should, suddenly these tasks seem challenging or impossible. Things that others take for granted are suddenly out of reach. And it's really not your fault if you don't recognize the value of your voice. Nobody teaches us about our, our voice. I certainly didn't know much about my own voice until I studied speech-language pathology. The closest thing that anyone taught me about my voice was an inside voice versus outside voice. But we usually tell the kids to use their inside voice because they are loud and annoying, not because it's good for their voice. I often meet people who have had voice problems for years and they didn't know that they had a problem or that they can actually do something about it. One of my first questions when I meet a new client is, how long have you had this voice problem? And very often the answer is, since I can remember. Meet one of my clients, let's call him Ben. His voice has been weak for the past 20 years. It's a lot of work to project his voice when speaking in a group of people. He often repeats his sentences to be heard. Sometimes he loses his voice for a couple of days. Sometimes his voice becomes hoarse. Ben never did anything with his voice or for his voice because he didn't know there was something he could do. Until last year, when his voice started to hurt after talking. In order to avoid vocal pain, Ben became quiet at work and he even stopped going out with friends. None of his friends understood his problem anyways. They couldn't relate. So Ben felt lonely. Yes, vocal problems can do that to you. Vocal problems have major social, emotional and other consequences. Look around yourself. There are not many people in our close circles who are dealing with vocal problems. Or are there? Wait, at the beginning I told you that 1 in 13 adults is affected by voice problems annually, but nobody talks about them and only a very few people get the help they need. I am happy to report that Ben is one of those people and he is improving. And just to be clear, I am not blaming you for not knowing. You will never hear me say, you should have known better. It's not your fault that you are dealing with a voice problem. Let me tell you, 
Teachers who use their voice daily and for long periods of time do not receive any education whatsoever about their voice and how to care for their voices. Teachers are very prone to vocal issues. There are some educational programs and trainings being developed right now to support teachers. Now? Only now? Why is it taking such a long time? What are we waiting for? I am here to tell you that there are things you can start doing today to avoid Ben's situation. If you didn't know, I now post short videos on TikTok about voice and vocal health. Yes, I am now on TikTok too. Someone there asked me, but why? Can you please share why someone should do or need vocal exercises? It's a great question. Should we? And if so, why? So this is my take on this topic. If you are using your voice for work, then you are considered a voice professional. Some voice professionals have very high demands on their voices. People like teachers, singers, speakers, actors, fitness instructors, people in sales, traders, call center agents, and many more. These professionals are more prone to vocal issues because they are like vocal athletes. And if they don't know how to take care of their voices, one day they may find themselves without a job. But many people in other occupation also rely on their voices for work. And then if you use your voice outside of work for your hobbies or just simple communication with your family and friends, what will you do if you cannot use your voice for these daily simple tasks? This is my message for people with voice start giving your voice the attention and care it needs and it doesn't have to take long here are my three tips tip number one learn more about your own voice you don't need to study anatomy or dive deep into vocal physiology just learn some basic voice care principles be curious about your own voice I am sure that you will find many interesting videos about voice here on YouTube. And of course, check out my videos too. Tip number two, keep your voice in a good shape. And especially if you are a voice professional with high demands on your voice, the absolute minimum is good hydration and a few vocal breaks throughout the day. I used to tell people to take 15 minutes from their day to check in on their voice. Now. I'm saying two minutes is all you need. Do something for your voice, vocal exercise, breathing exercise, mindfulness practice or massage, whatever your voice needs. Always check in with your voice. How does it feel before and after the exercise? As we get older, our voices get weaker. Doing simple exercises can prevent vocal troubles, but also keep those muscles in the larynx strong. If you don't know where to start, join my vocal gym. Check out the links below this video for more resources. Tip number three, if you think you have a vocal problem, don't wait. Talk to someone, ask questions. If your gut is telling you that your voice doesn't feel right, then stop listening to people around you telling you that you sound fine. Get help. There is no shame in having a vocal problem. It's not your fault. The same way as it is not your fault to get an earache or sprained ankle. If your ear or foot hurts, you go and seek help. Do the same for your voice. If you have questions, pop them down in the comments. Check out the links under this video for more information and resources for your voice. If you found this video helpful, click the like button and share it with your friends and check out my other videos right here below. Bye!